Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. We have turned the calendar over. It is a new month. It is May already. Can't believe the first four months of the year have already flown by. Uh, today we are going to take a look at Leggett and Platt out of the consumer discretionary sector. Let's jump right in the video. Now this is my investing criteria. Go ahead and pause this and take a look at it at your leisure, right? You want to understand the business, growing free cash flow over the last five years expected in the future, growing dividend, dividend payout ratio of 75% or less. Check the valuation based on dividend yield theory. Uh, you can check that out. Buy below current cost basis or within 15% of the 50 week, 52 week low. If it's in my position already, or what position I already hold, I'm looking for it under my cost basis. If it is one that I'm looking to add for the first time, I want it within 15% of the 52 week low or lower. Uh, return on invested capital, return on equity of 10% or higher or in line with its in uh, industry average. And for financial companies, we add in an additional metric there, price to book of one or lower. And for non-financial companies, it must meet four of the seven. For financial companies, it must meet five of the eight. Like I said, if you want to pause it here and go through this a little more, you can. Now back to Leggett and Platt. If you want to know more about them, check them out. Leggett.com, L-E-G-G-E-T-T.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. And they started way back in the 1800s, 1883, to be more specific. American inventor J.P. Leggett develops the idea for a spiral steel coil bed spring and partners with blacksmith and future brother-in-law C.B. Platt to form Leggett and Platt, right? And then more recently, as of 2020, they are in bedding components, still still making spring springs for beds, right? Automotive seat support and lumbar systems, specialty bedding foams and private label finished mattresses. Components for home furniture and work furniture, flooring underlayment, adjustable beds, bedding industry machinery. So they've obviously branched out a little bit. They are out of the consumer discretionary sector. These sectors typically take a hit in recessionary times. All right, I don't think a lot of people are going to be lining up to be buying new cars and new beds if they are in financial uncertainty, right? So again, Leggett.com. Check them out if you want to know more about them. That is their homepage. Now, the reason we're taking a look at them down, Leggett and Platt ticker LEG out of the consumer discretionary sector down 2.94%, almost a 3% drop on the day, closed out the day at $31.36, 52-week range as low as $30.05, as high as $41.94, so right up against their 52-week low here. Looks like a steady sell-off throughout the day, right? Average value 890000 today's was 933 right? A lot of selling there. Market cap of $4.173 billion. So they are a very small cap company, beta of 1.32. So they are more volatile than the overall market here. Price to earnings, PE ratio is $13.81. Earnings per share, EPS is sitting at $2.27. Next earnings date coming up actually was today. So that is probably why they were down. You might want to look at that earnings report, see what's going on there. Did they miss? Did they beat? I'm assuming they missed. But I've seen companies lately that even whenever they hit or do really well, they drop regardless. So you'd want to check that out. For dividend, $1.76 paid out on the year. Divide by four. They are a quarterly payer. We will see that here in a minute. Very, very high dividend yield right now, 5.45%. Ex-dividend date was March 14th. Their payout date was April 14th. So if you bought them now, since they've already paid out, you would be in line for the next dividend payout. And a one-year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, they see a new 52-week low, $30, right? So potential more downside to come, at least according to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from. I am not affiliated, just one of the sites I like to go to for information, right? And then I always recommend getting in and looking at more than just the surface level. You want to get into the statistics, get into the financials. So out of the statistics tab, one of the things I like to look at to see if a company is potentially undervalued, look at their dividend yield theory, right? Or look according to dividend yield theory and look at their five-year dividend average, which in this one is 4.05. What you want to do is look at the, compare that to the current dividend or what they call the forward dividend here, 5.45. So if it is higher, which it is right now, then that speaks to some potential undervaluation. If this number was lower than the 4.05, let's say it was 3.0, then it would speak to some overvaluation. Another thing to note here, 76.65% payout ratio. This is higher than I typically like to see. And another one, if you go into financials, you can look at their balance sheet. You can look at their uh, financial statement, which I suggest you do. That way you can see uh, their assets uh, to, to uh, 
liabilities. You want to look and see if their revenue is growing over time, right? You want to understand the business a little more. But one of the things you want to definitely look at is free cash flow. The dividend is paid out of free cash flow. So you want this growing over time. So 2019, 524,000. 2020, 536,000 growing there. Big, big drop from 2020 to 2021 down from 536,400 to 164,700 big concern there it did creep back up from 2021 to 2022 to 341,100 but overall from 2019 through 2020 there is a drop of about you know 200,000 uh in revenue there so or free cash flow there so that is not a good sign especially with their payout ratio being at this high and their dividend being this high. So that is a negative. Don't like the payout ratio being over 75%. Don't like uh, free cash flow not growing. That's two knocks against this so far. Now, I always recommend more than one site. So another one that I like is stockanalysis.com. Again, not affiliated, but you can find a lot of the same information just given to you in a different manner, right? Same statistics, you can go into the financials. This one offers what they call a forecast. And they've only had two analysts, so not a ton of analysts have taken a look at this, but they both call it a sell, right? So low estimate of $21, and that's probably why, $21 low estimate, which would be a 33.04% decrease in the stock price. Average estimate is even lower than what it currently sits at, $27.50. That would be a 12.31% decrease in the stock price. And if it happened to hit their high estimate, that would be a, of $34, that would be a 8.42% increase in the stock price. Not a very good outlet look here for the forecast. Another one that I like to get into right here, it comes from their statistics page, return on equity, return on invested capital. They do have uh, return on equity sitting at 19.10% and return on invested capital sitting at 12.3. So this does meet my metric as 10% or above, but uh, the rest of the metrics are not looking too great. And then lastly, I am long Leggett and Platt, right? I have 195.086 shares. My cost basis is $37.95. This has basically done nothing but go down since I bought it. Uh, currently sits at $31.37. So I'm down 17.51%, down $1,283.72. I have been waiting for this one to come back up to potentially trim it out of the position. Actually, I'm looking at uh, a couple other ones to trim out of the position and roll those into some other companies that I'm seeing more value in right now. This is one of them. Whirlpool is another one. And Stanley Black & Decker is a third, possibly AT&T is a fourth. Uh, and then potentially use that funds to, to buy some options as well or sell some options as well to get into a couple other positions. Pfizer being one. Uh, William Sonoma is another one that I really like out of the discretionary sector that a little bit better than Leggett and Platt at least right now. Uh, but, but big drop, trying to wait for it to come back a little bit. I may use this as a tax harvest loss, uh, tax harvest, tax lost harvest, a way to, you know, decrease any potential gains on the other positions uh, or gains overall in dividends this year. But we will see. But this is definitely on the chopping block for me anyway right now. But back to it. Again, payout ratio, we saw 70, above 76%. So that's not a negative. Does have dividend growth, 4.76% growth year over year. 44 cents per share, right? We saw the uh, payout date was April 14th. The last record date, ex-dividend date was March 15th. So again, if you bought them now, you would be in line for their next dividend. Personally, this is not one I'm really interested in right now. I have been trying to bring my cost basis down. I may, you know, round it out to 200 shares there uh, and try to bring that cost basis down a little bit and just sit on this one. Or like I said, I may just uh, use this as a tax loss harvest and sell out of the position and roll the funds the 6188 before I lose any more and just uh, take it on the chin, so to speak, and roll this into other funds. But we will see over the next uh, several days what happens with it. Maybe it's a, just a big drop today from earnings and it'll rebound a little bit. We'll see. Like I said, that one, this one right here, I would avoid, even though it's right up against the 52 week low, there is some potential for a new 52 week low. This one might just break on through uh, and head back towards that $20 low estimate that the uh, uh, people are seeing potential there. Or never know, though, it could rebound uh, and, and be at 34, 35 tomorrow. Yeah, you never really know. 
But as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, hit that subscribe button. Join me on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community trying to grow a community of like-minded dividend growth investors here so we can share our experiences, share stocks we're watching, we might see value in. Uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Leggett and Platt. Let me know if there are other stocks that you prefer right now in the uh, consumer discretionary space. I am, like I said, looking to replace it. Williams and Sonoma is one that I am looking at in that space right now. Really like the metrics. I actually think it had a bit of a pullback today as well. So I might be looking at that in the future. With that said, this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation it should be considered financial advice. I'm always sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can lose money. You should never invest any amount. Not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria, or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.